Okay. Well, hello everyone. So this, uh, welcome to this week's class. Joe, again, is not feeling well. So uh, not a lot going on just ahead of the Fed meeting that um, we all are sort of waiting on. And that's tomorrow at 2 p.m. So basically, the uh, I'll pull up the charts here in a minute. Not a whole lot happening. Had a little bit of a push higher this morning. The Fed preview, this is Coindesk saying that Powell likely to trigger a healthy pullback in Bitcoin. Well, and that's fine because we have come a long way in a short period of time. So again, we'll unpack this, but uh, you know, this chart would tell me otherwise, it's a little tricky to, because we've broken out of this trend line here. So, and a pullback down to the bull market support band would be about what I would, uh, would like to see and around 20,000. So that would be a healthy pullback. TSI overbought the ERI here in the red. Uh, usually, and I'll just, you know, again, jumping ahead a bit. Usually when we get up into the red line on the ERI, unless we're in a massive bull trend, then, but we usually see a nice little pullback here. So, but as Mike said last night, how many of you were on the class last night with Mike? You know, he's saying he thinks really the bottom is in. And um, so that would be, uh, a healthy pullback would be back down above the bull market support band and bounce out of it. So we saw that kind of right here. And again, we've come up so far. We saw this similar thing happen right here, right? And then, of course, we had a pullback that was 63%. And then we've come up from this about 43%. So we could still push higher. Now, I had said 25.5 before, so we could have a little pump higher. But I don't know. I mean, it's, um, you know... This is a weekly chart, healthy pullback. Certainly, I think that would be the thesis to uh, to run with here. And um, Twitter preparing for payments touched on that last night in the class. And uh, let's see what CNBC, CNBC, I'm not ready to turn off my ad blocker. So they kind of blocked my news on these. Let me see if I can see it. Elliot by someone I've never heard of, but um, you know, that would be, um, I, th I think we, you know, the monthly still says we had higher and we, of course, cover that uh, tomorrow in tomorrow's class. All right. So strange, it loaded it fine on this one, on this tab. Uh, all right. So that's Powell, the FOMC tomorrow at 2 p.m. And, um, you know, I think we'll keep our class at the normal time and just kind of give everybody a heads up on what to watch for. And uh, Barron's wants me to pay for their okay, so no worries. That's why you like these so it's free services like Crypto Panic is a good aggregator. And let's see, do you guys have any questions though? I have the chat pulled up. Let's see who's here today. We've got Alex, Andreas, Chase, Julie, KS, Lisa, Pirate J, Renee, sorry, Rennie, Sam, and Sam Terrell. Maybe that's you, Sam. You're in two places, no problem. I think that's probably you. And I know we're talking later today, so that's good. Let's see, uh, just skimming the news. This is Crypto Panic. Anything that jumps up, the uh, what to expect in February, we can take a look at this. Just trying to get an overall feel for what, what the news says, how I feel about news. Um, small pullback so far, back in the no trade zone. Not sure who that is, Bitcoin options, market signal, upside price, despite... Okay, despite warnings of possible Fed-fueled sell-off. That sounds interesting. Always taking a little bit of contrarian on these things. Judge clarifies, uh, no, nothing news. Let's see, Ethereum, Bitcoin, NFTs, don't care. Ethereum staking, blah, blah, blah. All right. Uh, let's see, something about Solana. Uh, I will touch on the uh, Ethereum, this news article below at ETH staked on Lido, Lido. Not really sure how you say that. We'll go with Lido. All right, so let me just close some of these. That's all the news we probably need here. Twitter preparing for payments. You know, that could certainly uh, be a boost. Anything that leads to mass adoption uh, it would lead, you know, you know, Mike and I, we don't disagree on these things, but I had suggested that we are waiting for regulation for 
sovereign wealth funds, institutions, big money to come in. And he said it really is going to come from mass adoption from people. And, and really, it's both. I, I mean, one will fuel the other for sure. And so Twitter, uh, you know, his we've been saying this all along is his purchase of Twitter would be to add in a payments rail, whether it's Dogecoin. I think ultimately they'll build their own Twitter coin. Why not? Uh, you know, and um, in the in the beginning, Bitcoin. So, um, yeah, Financial Times, Elon is open to adding Bitcoin and crypto to its Twitter payments vision. I said that weeks ago. So no surprise there. If you're going to spend $44 billion to buy something, probably have a, an end game and a way to monetize that. And so certainly uh, Elon's no, no dummy in thinking ahead. So that's his next billion dollar play. And so... Let's see, prioritize fiat just until, you know, until we get to mass adoption and then its future will likely include the alternative payment method. Sure, makes sense, right? And, uh, and this is interesting, it's, has been applying for regulatory licenses across the US in parent preparation to begin facilitating payments through the app. Okay, also smart to do, play with regulators, play nicely and you don't wanna have them on uh, as your enemy. So, and, um, you know, Binance was not playing nicely with regulators early on. So they've, you know, they're kind of coming back to the table with that. Let's say, let's see. Yeah. So, okay. Interesting. Close the company. Twitter started to map out architecture needed to facilitate payments on the platform, small team, which potentially include functionality for cryptocurrency. Okay. So we've covered that. But, um, <clears throat> but Musk has stated he wants Twitter to serve Fiat. For, okay. Same thing. I miss Fiat there. And all right. So that's nothing new. Great. All right. That's good news, though. And, um, you know, 2021. Now, we probably won't see as big of a pump up yet, you know, a little pullback. But uh, I do expect the overall February monthly candle will be higher. We'll talk about that because we've been showing that just to jump over big bullish engulfing candle. These things, um, you know, we do have until the end of today. So, you know, this is interesting timing, isn't it? FOMC is tomorrow. FOM candle closes today. Now, we could see a big sell-off. If we see a sell-off to down below 20,450 or 20,400 rather, then I'm going to be I'm going to discount this bullish engulfing candle a bit because you know, it is do an alert there. Uh, that um, below 20 thousand to what did i say 250 for example and um so that would still be a bullish engulfing candle on here still be ab above this moving average but this candle here is really what we want to get back above and of course this is kind of some of the contagion that we saw and then the ftn ftn uh, ftm rather crash so this line is more my line in the sand for this. I want to see us hold above there. And again, that's going to be 20,500. Okay. But by the end of today, uh, unlikely Bitcoin drops 2,000, uh, 1,500 points rather. So we'll keep an eye on that. Okay. So let's come back to this here. You know, healthy pullback though. I mean, I'd love to see us push higher today and close near the top. I mean, this would clearly, we close near the top. That's a very solid bullish engulfing candle top to bottom. And um, we like those, you know, those are the, the strongest ones. And just looking past here, the, the less topping tail, the stronger the signal here. So let's, uh, I know we're still going through the news here, you guys, but um, let's, uh, let's see now why my uh projected here yeah so watch this so we'll go back and turn these engulfing candles on so basically you know the the larger the candle and the less topping tail on the top the more likely it's going to continue higher this one this one and then uh this one these three went higher this one went higher so you know i do think we've had higher but we'll let the news tell us they'll come out uh, tomorrow and say hey get some great news the FM, FOMC, we're rocketing higher. Uh, so anyway, we've got uh, Bitcoin pump 43% in January. So let's see what these guys are saying. Mm. I'll suggest continue rally Bitcoin Nigeria. I don't know. There's not much here. We'll just skip that. 
So Solana price lies after DeFi project shuts down. Which one was that? It was this the created a bearish engulfing candlestick on Solana? So more bad news for Solana. Better another chance to buy it cheaper. Which uh, project here? Let's see. It doesn't say which one failed. Solana prediction for February. Collect correction. All right, we'll look at Solana. Anybody holding Solana right now? Uh, DeFi project, which one? Is it uh, the one that got recently shut down by the the uh, SEC or sued by the SEC, the Libra? I don't know, this one, Freaky, Freaky Town, Freaky Town. I don't know what that is. Um, Freaky Town, Freaky Town. Frick, sorry, friction, I guess is what they're trying to say. You know, creativity only goes so far. Um, okay friction anyway never heard of it uh we'll look at solana staked on lido lido finance is one you want to watch they uh, are making waves here in the DeFi space they're one of the more solid projects and actually why don't we look at that because i was reading a little bit more on lido and um I'll uh, go with Coinbase here. Actually, I, I did the exact opposite of what I should have done here. Longer history, it would have been on uh, Binance here. But I want to make sure it's the right one. LDO, Binance or Gemini. Just to double make double sure. So KuCoin, we've gone back farther. Um, actually, this is the Dow. I want to let me just double check that. Lido Finance maybe is that LDO. That's why these things you always double check these because they can be so similar. I got Phantom Coin confused with PH Phantom Coin at one point, and I had to be corrected. I had it wrong in the newsletter. I had to go back and fix that. Uh, so uh, Lido, I believe it's LDO, but um. But just to double check and um, trying to get to like coin market cap, make it easy because the website didn't actually say it. The Lido Dow, but I don't want Lido Finance. Anybody know offhand? I should know this. I'm sorry, but uh, the Lido Dow, I don't know if that's it, what we want. LDO, but certainly that could be a different one. Lido Finance is uh, Lido.fi. It's just, I don't, it may be different. They have all these different types. So, well, okay. So LDO, Lido, Dow. So it's the same, same. All right, good, good enough. So uh, let's see, uh, interesting. I would read up on that. Lido Finance is one of these DeFi programs. Now, if we're just looking at the chart, we'll come back to this, but it does have a nice breakout there. All right, so there's some news. Let's see what the news was on that. Uh, let's see, ETH staked on Lido Finance sets new milestones. Okay, just starting out, but I've been, I, I had, so here's, here's where it landed on my radar. I have a SaaS platform that we're building into Web3, and I'd hired a blockchain expert. This is back in 2021 to uh, research the best way to do yield farming and uh, to earn some, uh, some yield on these. And they came up with Lido. And um, so it's making some moves here. It's one to keep an eye on. But anyway. Don't run out and buy it just because of that. All right. Anything else we want to look at? Anybody here? Anything? I want these classes to be more interactive here. Tomorrow is more me sort of going through things. Let's see. Top analyst predicts rally for one metaverse. I'm not really familiar with one O-N-E. Shibu whale shifts. Oh, what is that? 33 trillion? Million, billion, three trillion Shiba. Mysterious crypto whale abruptly relocating trillions of Shibu. I don't know. I'm not, I'm staying away from Shiba. It's, um, it has no limit in it. They can just, the owners can keep printing, printing, printing more of it. Uh, all right. Legendary Peter, Peter Brent says, Bitcoin flashing rare bullish signal. That sounds interesting. All right. Pirate J would like to go over CHC chilies. We can do that. All right, Mark Yusko has got some news. That's from yesterday. He's always good. Finance partners with MasterCard. Prepaid crypto cards push for adoption. We want to, this is sort of overall sentiment, more adoption coming. 
and uh, ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Shibu teases new crypto projects, Dogecoin rival. Anyway, Michael Guru, Raul Paul, Avil's forecast positive year ahead. You know, I agree with that. Stocks crypto to trap traders before new lows. All right. So we have all kinds of, all right, here's some uh, some counterparty. We know you want. I like that because uh, I don't want consensus. And um, all right, we've got Ben Callen saying warning, unsustainable rally. And House releases roadmap on Biden's administration plan to tackle crystal risks. That's probably enough. Capital and Bitcoin highest rate since July. Oh, that's interesting, though. Institutions pour capital into Bitcoin at highest rate since July of last year. So that's a good one. Solana following Ethereum's early days. Top trader compares Solana and ETH. Yeah, I mean, they have a lot of similarities. And uh, there's some, um, I forget who it was. It's a good channel. And uh, the uh, guy does his research well. He's got really good uh, uh, graphics and, and uh, research team. And he basically predicts Solana will be worth 20%. So if you say, if you, you know, if you agree that Ethereum could go to 20,000 or higher, then 20% of that would be 4,000 on Solana, which tr- currently trading or, you know, around, I don't even know, $20, $30, something down in those ranges. Where is Solana? lately $24 pretty good pretty good guess okay let me close some of these crypto panic didn't really have much We've covered that I don't want to have too many windows open and Lido Dow okay so let's dive into this a little bit and then we'll dive into some charts on uh, charts mostly uh tomorrow um but yeah no we'll do that we'll go through that and then um we can look at some fast movers here too on the uh scanner Peter Brent says Bitcoin flashing rare bullish signal. All right. What is he talking about here? We have bottom is a double walled fulcrum pattern. Okay. Uh, extremely rare. 2X target is mid 25,000s. What does mid 25,000s mean? Well, that's what I've been saying. 25,5. You don't need to go into fancy fulcrums and things. We, we already showed that, but we'll, we'll look at it. I'm not familiar with the fulcrum. I don't know what that is. Looks like a fancy way of saying a cup and handle. It's not really a cup and handle, but the psychology is the same. Price drops, evens out, sort of has a bull pattern, kind of like Haven, you know, so puts in kind of a lower low and then starts putting in higher lows. The longer it goes sideways, this is gas in the tank. And then basically sellers are exhausted, buyers are back in control, and we start going sideways, more equilibrium, more consolidation, pump higher. This is essentially a bit of a, you know, this two steer handle, you know, it's just whatever you call it, it's this investor psychology. Now, when sideways here, didn't see a big sell off breaking out, breaking out of this handle pattern here, buyers are in control. Where would it go? 25.5. We have other things pointing it to that. So, anyway, um, 25,000, but that's what I've been saying. 25,000 could be a tough resistance. If it breaks that, then I think 30,000, and then we could see another rollback, rollover in March. I just, for some reason, March feels like it's, uh, we'll see it roll over. I mostly because I think we'll see follow through to the upside on based on that bullish, strong bullish engulfing candle. And um, so, yeah, it's 25.5, like I was saying, last is the bear's last line of defense, Bitcoin weekly charts. So we'll look at that on ours, right? So, all right, 22 down. All right, Not, no real news there. Morgan Creek, Mark Yuska says, things close to getting fun for Bitcoin. Here's his outlook. Now he's he's more of a bull, so we'll expect a bullish slant. Uh, he's sharp. I, I'm, I'm a fan of Mark. He's a uh, sharp guy. Let's see. Sideways inflation, recovery 18,000. He believes inching closer toward a new bull market based on the halving cycle. Inching closer, now we, you know, we, that's expected. The big question mark is, and I've, I heard this somewhere, that um, it, it, we have a melt up sooner than later and then a deep correction. And then maybe, you know, we just can't rely on this, what's happened the last three times. There's new players and bigger money involved. And I think they're, kind of counting on us to be complacent with that so we'll watch and read the charts as we go 
So, okay, cup and okay, made the perfect cup and handle. There we go. But spring, interestingly, think about the four year cycle. Spring is basically flat. There, the key is um, a lot of volatility. Yeah, summer, April through May, nine months ahead of the halving, that's when things are going to get fun. So, we want to be kind of ready and um, make some big profits, take base hits here going into that period, because that could be where things get really fun. Remember 2022, midsummer, things bottomed hard and shot up. We had a beautiful ERI on the weekly and daily. So, you know, we really do want to see another sell-off kind of a thing. And, and maybe, let me just jump over to the charts because um, do I want to show this chart? Let me go to a weekly because maybe what we see since uh, my concern is we didn't have that deep ERI down here, but we had this kind of bleeding capitulation all the way along. So maybe what we see is a nice push up to 30,000 uh, and potentially higher. I don't know. And if we see a melt up and then we see boom, uh, disregard the numbers, but maybe a sharp drop and then something like that. And then we see our really nice bottoming, ERI. It's a terrible example of a candle there, but but you see what I'm saying? Because if I go back here and I'll turn on this weekly ERI for you guys, in retrospect and in hindsight, oops, the we didn't know how good the ERI was on a weekly basis, but uh, this uh, July of 2021 had this double ERI. Now, this was the first one, but it didn't confirm. TSI didn't confirm. TSI was still going lower. Remember, we want an ERI with a TSI confirming, going green and then ideally above the 20 line. But this is the ideal signal we're looking for in a nice bullish engulfing candle with a lower tail. And uh, this is a uh, you know, symbol of reversal of direction. You know, it's kind of a doji hammer kind of a thing. And um, engulfing hammer just making that up but these kind of signals really what i want to see here's another one bullish engulfing nice tail on the bottom eri uh tsi it was not confirming there so that's where we would have to have said well we're bouncing out of the bull market support band though you know so this is a bit reading the tea leaves here's another one bullish engulfing ERI, see what I'm saying? So that's really what I want to see. And this was another with TSI confirming signal, key in a, you know, the key in the bell were late. So uh, the fact that we didn't really see many of these, we got a little tiny one here, but we didn't get, I wonder if all of this on a monthly would give us that. And, uh, you know, I am always uh, careful not to uh, read too much. Well, look at that. Okay. All right. All right. This is very interesting. Okay. So basically what I was looking at here, when you start doing this long enough, you can see these things from farther away. But essentially I was looking at this little tiny ERI, but the accumulation of the entire month in the weekly, it didn't do much of anything, just went sideways. But on as far as a bottoming on the monthly basis, right, all these blend together. And so that's new, you guys. Pay attention to this. This is very important. Big bullish engulfing candle. Uh, I'm sorry, and an ERI on a monthly. Last time we had an ERI on the monthly here. Bottom. Let's go back. I'm excited to see that. I we, that wasn't there until recently. So this is why um, you know we want to keep an eye on these things. And, and back here too. So these are less often that we see these, but but invariably. I haven't seen one be wrong yet in the longer time frames. So we've only had four. This was a little late, but you know, we had the bullish engulfing back here. And uh, so we're getting a really gift, a good gift as a signal right now. And um, huge bullish engulfing with an ERI and TSI. I have shown you the TSIs before. The TSIs have always gone up after this. How many of you are excited to see this? I, I'm definitely, um, this to me says we, we, that we're going higher. I, I mean, here's the, here's the caveat that we still have to be careful of, not to go all in because we had it here and then we had it, but the TSI hadn't confirmed yet. 
huge. So we did see, and we talked about this recently, we did see a little fake out pump up here that was didn't look like much, but it was like a 45%, 50% push higher. See that? Let me let me zoom in on that. Um, I don't know. Th this is what I'm looking at. 52% push up higher. Followed by the next month, you know, kind of closed here. And, you know, we saw a 40% a 40 dump that recovered before we shot up higher. Okay. So I'm going to take a screenshot of this. I just want to make sure you guys are getting that. I'll put it in the signal because, uh, and, um, you know, th then it took a few more months to shoot up and then kind of there's bullish engulfing shot up. So there is that possibility. However, well, yeah, so we had the bullish engulfing here, it shot up here and then it dropped another. Few. So let's take a look at what we've had happen here just now. Okay, so we saw a nice push up higher here from the lows, 50%. Uh-oh, bullish engulfing. And that's, I, I wish we, but hey, look, and then we could see another 40%, which would take us down to around that 20, that 13, 14,000, right? So... You know, uh, what we'll, we will know soon enough. And if we start seeing the TSI getting above 20, then we're good. Nice curvature upward. So I'm leaning toward this is starting to look like this. Uh, this one, though, this is what happened is it, it got up to here and pulled back a bit. Now, the TSI just kind of dipped a little bit, but that's where we saw that 40% correction. Okay, well, you know, but aren't you glad you have these... Um, and uh, look at there, all these uh, sea of green FTM 3X is up 18% again today. Uh, and um, but, but just coming back to this, we've got the uh, RSI pushing higher. That's bullish. Uh, overall, these are looking bullish. That money flow hasn't moved at all. Barely, it, you know, it should be down here. I'd like to see it down lower. But um, everything else turning up. Turning higher. But at a monthly basis, doesn't preclude that we could uh, still take another dip. So here's what I'm here's what I want you to take away from that is that if we do see some pullback, that will be a great buying opportunity. Okay, and and likely we do see a pullback here. It would make sense to come down and test this twenty thousand level and support, maybe even dip into the bull market support band. But I'd love to see it bounce off of it. Kind of like back here. See this? So here's a good example. Pretty similar here too. Shot up. Uh 30%. Started down here, came back down, tested the bull market support pan. That's what I'd like to see. And uh, even if it sort of takes a few weeks here to kind of calm down and then, but I drew this, uh drew this on here a week ago. So this is what I would this is what I, I this is what I think will happen, you know. Coming here, all the shorts are loading up. Maybe we push higher, break up, rally up 30,000. I don't think it's the sigh uh, on this pump, but maybe we have all this here. So, and then up at 30,000. I forget why. I have to look at the why that was. There's other reasons for that. And then uh, come back down and bounce higher. But let's see. Let's keep going with the news. We're, we're creating our overall thesis here. All right, uh, so Raul Paul, uh, positive year. Did we finish with uh, Mark Yusko? Mostly we did. And that's interesting. Let's, I'm back on the Mark Yusko article. So the reality is, and that's why I'm pretty sure Satoshi's not a single person. I don't think any one person could be that smart. Just think about the having guarantees numbers go up. Yeah, so. Let's see, we won't dive into that. All right, covered that. Then we've got, um, yeah. So let's look at market cycles here and signals from the Fed framing this time around 2018. Last time the Federal Reserve stopped raising rates, they didn't cut until August, 2019. 
So, so that's kind of, I think, what we're in for. They'll stop raising rates, probably raise a quarter point here tomorrow. That's priced in. If they don't, we'll, we're going to shoot higher. I mean, a surprise a zero point hike will shoot higher. And, and the reason the rationale for that is with all the debt that we have, I'm not sure if you guys realize, the U.S. can't afford its own debt as we keep raising interest rates. It raises the likelihood of default. Now, that's a whole other conversation and why people are saying these, uh, these uh, CBDCs are so dangerous. They're speculating. Some people are speculating that uh, we just basically say, yeah, we're not going to pay. We're just going to switch everything over to a U.S. digital dollar and screw you, everyone else send the whole world uh, markets into it. It's kind of a, a reset, basically. All right, we're going to start over. So, hey, we'll see what happens. Nobody thought we'd ever see a, a pandemic like we saw. All right, well, what do you guys think? Have you guys been reading that? Yeah, I can see KS has some comments here. Threshold has been, okay, not familiar. Okay, we'll look at that in a minute. Uh, well, let's see. So... I want to finish the thought here. It didn't cut rates till August 2019. So when that happened, was uh, the Fed went on hold, markets went up on a rampage. Yeah, when we when they start lowering rates and going to quantitative easing, that uh, markets took off. And he's saying it's not dissimilar to now. So that's interesting, and um, you know, so kind of all falls into our overall macro outlook that maybe short-term pullback, but start recovering here a little bit here, maybe a pullback in March, and you know, bounce around here in April, May, and then summertime we see a, a big rally going in toward the having. So, yeah, so kind of choppy. One when you think it's going straight to the high, and then it's like it's gone back down. We're gonna die. Yeah, but but we know, and that's where we we do best is in swing trading. And uh, oh, we'll go back to okay, we survived. We actually made some money. Cool. That uh, he thinks we're in the midst of an ordinary recession. So that's interesting. I mean, there's still that news by um, I was just telling somebody last night and uh, Druckenmiller. Yeah, so he's he, no Druckenmiller has a lot more clout than Raul Paul. Uh, who uh, who says that um, we're going to end for a hard landing in 2023? So, you know, I don't know. That's uh, there's an old uh, old joke by one of these presidents where he had his top economists in the room, and one of them said, "Well, on the one hand, uh, we've got this. This could happen," and uh, he says, "On the other hand, this and that could happen." And the president said, "What what we need right now is a is a one handed economist, a good one handed economist, right? Because uncertainty." isn't good for markets. And uh, so kind of a joke, but uh, all right. Recession driven by the Federal Reserve, raising rates, prices going up too fast. People can't buy as much stuff. I don't know. I haven't really felt it. Has anyone felt it yet? You know, maybe you buy less steaks or expensive bottles of wine or just in general. Now I, I'm, I'm single. I live, uh, you know, uh, now, but uh, it really cut my footprint down. So certainly with families and things and gas, all that, I can see that would be noticeable. But, um, you know, these things are generally over sensationalized more. And, uh, and uh, when you go through it, you're like, oh, that wasn't so bad. All right. Uh, Nicholas Merton, never heard of him, issues warning, says stocks and crypto about to trap traders before new lows. Um, this could be Nicholas Merton trying to make a name for himself because these guys don't, they stay in obscurity if they say every, the same thing everything else does. And uh, so we'll look, we'll hear about popular animal analysts, have, not that popular. Recent strength in risk assets likely setting the stage for a brutal bull trap. I think we see a pullback, but um, this was what happens in, in these things. You know, the, the bull starts coming back. People think it's a bull trap and they wind up not getting in because they're waiting out for the big bottom. You know, I had been saying 10,000, 12, 5, 14,000, but now more and more people are saying that. And that's consensus. And to me, that tells me, well, we're now less likely to go there. And uh, let's see, crypto markets have a little more room to run before they lure in unsuspecting bulls. Fair, fair point, you know, but but I don't think we, we break new lows. Uh, unless there's some bigger, big announcement, right? We just don't know. 
And uh, and don't forget, we have that Mt. Gox uh, September Bitcoin. And, you know, probably, though, if things are rallying, those people aren't going to want to dump all their Bitcoin. They're going to they might sell some of it. But I think GBTC is the bigger the issue there. Uh, let's see. The two main outcomes, federal uh, Federal Reserve's first meeting this year, Wednesday, immediate drop or an immediate rally based on. And that's the thing. You know, we could see go either way. Uh, let's see. I feel like it's a bull market beginning of this turn up. And then simply we're going to see equities crypto probably go up to the strangest. We'll convince everyone it's the next bull market. Yeah. So I think that's that's valid, too. And all the retail traders are buying in. And absorb a lot of the buy side pressure and liquidity and trap those traders in order to drive prices lower, absorb a lot of the excess liquidity that's causing inflation in the economy. Yeah, I think that's certainly reasonable. And also think about it, you know, the institutions, the big players are finally like, all right, we need to get into this, but we need to get prices lower to really accumulate because that's what they do. You know, they don't buy at the top. They can't. There's not enough buyers at the top for them to dis distribute. So, yeah. So here he says, such a scenario will be straight from the playbook of the largest players that influence financial markets, whereby price moves just enough to convince crowds before a reversal takes them out of the game. Yeah. So um, let's see that uh, he's this is just setting up his next paragraph. And we talked about traps for traders. Generally speaking, asset prices will go up to that point where everyone is convinced this is the start of the next bull market. But uh, that's when institutions short. Yeah. Now we don't really have a lot of ins. Well, I, I don't know that we don't have we don't have the pension funds and things that need regulation. We certainly have hedge funds and Ark Invest and these other institutions. That um, but here's what he's saying. That's when they start to short, and that ex includes exchanges. They do definitely accumulate and they take positions. They have A books and B books. And that's what this happens. They start building. This is a very this is part of the Wyckoff pattern too. So they start building positions to the downside and through their weight and through their mass on their order size are able to lead towards a dramatic move to the downside. Yeah. So exactly what I said. Through their weight and their mass. Um yeah, I mean, basically, they can push prices down. And they can absorb some on their their off book uh, orders, and know of the over over the counter orders as well. And vice versa, if they want markets to go up, they'll start making those bets and have that kind of upward pressure. Same, you know, the whales. And so, um, never heard of this guy. I'll go back and watch the video, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, I would agree with that. Let's see, Benjamin Cowan, uh, Ben's a good guy. I met him at Bitcoin 2022. Uh, how many of you, are any of you going to that this May? I don't know yet. You know, it was, uh, I liked, I like Miami. May is a little hot, but uh, it's it's a lot of fun. It'd be good to meet up with some of you. Uh, there's a small chance. And and um, so here's the thing. I, there's a small chance, actually more than a small chance that I'm going to be putting together a mastermind gathering for those interested in uh, Mexico, Playa del Carmen, possibly, uh, maybe Miami, but uh, uh, maybe it makes sense more in Miami to do. There's a great place that um, I know the owners and he's like the Richard Branson of, of Mexico. He's got a beautiful home on the ocean and I've rented it before and um, done masterminds, which is where we all get together and kind of talk about things and you really get to pick my brain and I might bring out down some experts uh, in that. So let me know if that's of interest and if you'd prefer Mexico or Miami. But either way, I would do it either before or right after Bitcoin 2022. And um, yeah, I've got a great picture with Ben here. He's tall. He didn't, wouldn't know that he's so tall because he sits on, a, I guess, a short chair in his videos. Uh, but anyway, Ben's good. Let's see, Beth questioning the sustainability of the current Bitcoin rally based on historical precedents. And uh, 780, he's got a ton of YouTube people now. Yeah, these kind of these guys have over a million. I saw the BitBoy broke a million, and then he suddenly is at a million five, and then the Altcoin Daily guys broke a million. So just, you know, uh, leading toward adoption. We're the early adopters, and there's, we're getting, you know, still more into that next range with the more people. Subscribers Bitcoin replaced the early 2020 trajectory or flagship crypto rally before plunging significantly. 
All right, let's look at that 2020 trajectory would be back in here. That's what we talked about there. This, uh, I believe, let me come back on which one do we have it on? I know we drew that on one of these. It was this one, wasn't it? No, I don't remember. But but yeah, this is what he's referring to is this and then that. Now, that was COVID, obviously. Unless, let me make sure I've got that right. Early 2020. Um, back in here. Yeah, so early 2020 and then pushed up and then me. But that was the COVID crash. I'm surprised he's saying that. You know, certainly some of that might have been baked in and who knows. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to watch that later. So this is uh, Bitcoin 10.5. Okay, 3,800, but why doesn't he mention the COVID? I'm surprised it's out. Yeah, but come on, Ben. That's not relevant. That's apples and oranges. But still, yeah, but so even this, though, same thing, higher highs. I think the reason I think we've put in the bottom is because that hash ribbon indicator we talked about. So and if you want to learn more about the bull market support band, Ben does it good. He always talks about it. He's got a good channel. Uh, kind of dreadfully boring, but um, you watch it on uh, one and a half X speed. It gets, it's not too bad. All right. So administration plans to tackle crypto risks. And, um, you know, they keep denying the ETFs. So they're, they're holding on for something. And the SEC anyway, and certainly SEC is tied, in, tied into the government. When uh, it, I won't say if, but when we get meaningful crypto regulation from the government, we're going to see an explosion of institutions, pension funds, uh, you know, U.S. based, a lot of money, and then also offshore uh, wealth funds and things like that. I, I think, you know, in, in the end, this bloodbath in 2022 really cleaned out the swamp, not not to borrow the political term there here. But, you know, there was a lot of bad actors. People were way over leveraged. Now we can, you know, the swamp's been bulldozed out. Now we can lay concrete. There's a good analogy. Start laying down some good, solid uh, foundation. And, and, you know, it's a good analogy. I, right across the street here, there was a, a grocery store they tore down and they're building a huge retirement home. So I'm watching this every day. They took forever to sort of uh, move all the mud out of the way. It didn't look like they were doing anything. There were lots of bulldozing and beeping and cranes and uh, you know hammering and just like, what are they doing? But they were drilling down, laying 30 foot steel beams into the ground, concrete, smashing them down, or down way deep down into the bedrock. And, uh, and then finally they started pouring concrete and rebar and, but now that that foundation's in, oh, it's going up every day. It's like, my God, but that's, that's what we need. You can't build skyscraper in, in the, uh, the swamp. And I, you know, I'm using that analogy because I'm from Florida, I spent 15 years in Florida in, in the uh, Everglades. I didn't live in the Everglades, but you know, that's the point of that. You, there's no buildings out there. So I, you know, that uh, doesn't make it any easier if you lost money in these markets. But, uh, but we're going to really focus on getting back and uh, making to a point where we're ready to capitalize on the bull run. So, all right. So we we'll want to keep an eye on this. And what I would also suggest, you'd heard me say to do a Google alert. And uh, I've been doing that on Gemini. So I've been getting a few news uh, things alerting and probably a good idea on U.S. crypto regulation. You want to do that together? Google, Google Alerts. Imagine that. Go over here. I uh, click on Google Alerts here, and it says clear, create alert about. And uh, you see why I've got one down here. Gemini Crypto. Uh, I've been following developments in Alzheimer's disease and things like that, and my name. So if anybody posts an article about me, it'd be good to know about it. But let's say U.S. Uh, is, do they usually do a period? So crypto regulation. So, yeah, and see right there, it brings up alert preview. U.S. has a renewed urgency to regulate crypto post-FTX podcast. I almost said Holocaust for some reason, but I guess so it was a crypto Holocaust. Um, so, 
but these things will then land in my my inbox. So create alert. It's going to ask me. It might ask you which Google account you want, and there you go. So I'll get those alerts. And uh, so I, I recommend doing that because as soon as we get close to that, and it'll it'll be, <clears throat> you know, I, I don't know. I, that's a good question. How could we find early signs of that? Uh, and I don't know if there will be a vote coming up, but we'll certainly want to keep an eye on that. All right. Um, just looking over here, last Coinbase list, Kava, Advanced Ethereum, Cosmos interoperability. This is what I get out of these news articles. What's Who's in the news? Who's consistently innovating? And Cosmos is obviously uh, Adam. And um, that's a good one. You know, these the, we're going to, I think what I'll probably do is put out our top 10 uh, the, the, which is mostly in the basket. But uh, at any rate, banking agencies issue joint guidance, imperative uh, res separating risky assets from the banking system. Yeah, now the banks are terrified. There's also uh, the US recently said out of Biden's office saying would, that banks uh, sort of switching to crypto uh, or was it institutions switching over to crypto rails would be a huge mistake is what they said. It sounds kind of ominous and threatening. So there may be some some of that initially, but it's you know so be aware of that. But also remember, like Victor Victor Hugo said, nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. And so it'll come. It's just we might see a hiccup here along the way, and that's to be expected. Public awareness. Let's see risks of buying. This is some more fud. We encourage regulators to encourage these efforts. Uh, including those designed to address and limit financial institutions exposure. Well, and, and this is why they're not approving the uh, spot ETFs because they say there's not enough protection for investors, but it's very vague. They're, they're holding out for when they can get their hands in, on this somehow and get regulated or I don't know, you know, who knows. But, um, but when that happens, regulation and spot ETFs, guys, this is going to, it's going to tinderbox, it's going to explode. So and and you know look at that don't you think it might possibly happen in in conjunction with a pre halving run up and then they say oh here's the news but we already knew that cuz pre prior to the halving we would expect that so just just in time for the uh, government to dip their greedy little hands into uh, into the mix here all right. Uh, White House recommends mainstream institutions, pension funds not be given the green light. Yep, seems as I've been saying from Congress to dive headlong into crypto assets, but that's that's reasonable. You don't want to go lose everyone's pension funds. You know, only the government's allowed to do that with our Social Security. <laughs> I had that conversation the other day with my sister. Uh, my father worked for the government for a long time, had Social Security. Uh, I haven't been paying in. I've been self-employed. And um, even if you had been, some question whether that's going to be enough. So for many of us, crypto is kind of our uh, saving grace on this. You know, So, well, I mean, there's other things to do, operating businesses and other investments, of course. Uh, but anyway, um, but that's really the TL, TLDR here. White House recommends uh, you know, exercise caution. This is why they're not allowing the SPF, sorry, the... Uh, <laughs> mixed up uh, word salad there, the SEC to uh, allowed ETFs. While the administration concedes that it supports innovation in the realm of financial services, safeguards first need to be in place. Certainly reasonable. Um, and hopefully that, you know, it sounds like that's in the works here. So this is a good article. I'm glad we dove into it. Administration wholeheartedly supports responsible technology uh, innovations that make financial services cheaper, faster, safer, more accessible. Okay. Well, show me, show us the money, you know, get it done. Government bureaucracy takes time, though. Yet to realize these benefits, new technologies need commensurate safeguards. I, I don't know why I just immediately thought of Ted Cruz, who's sort of made himself a crypto pioneer and is trying to pass legislation. So there's a good chance he runs uh, again in 2024 and um, tries to corner the crypto vote, you know. But we'll see. That's my prediction. My spidey sense doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that one out. But uh, but if they do, if we do, if they do, whoever got a crypto friendly president, you know, that, that really um, e either runs on that promise to expedite regulation and ETFs and all that and can do it. Well, we're off to the races. Uh, you know, again, last night we said 
we're sort of like 1991 here compared to the internet. Safe calls will ensure technologies are secure and beneficial to all. And, uh, you know, less privacy means that, but hey, that's, that's okay. Look, you know, what are we going to do? And that the new digital economy works for the many, not the few. To put the right safeguards in place, we will keep driving forward the digital asset framework we have developed while working with Congress to achieve these goals. Yeah. And I'm reading this out loud because I know some of you are doing other things and that's fine. So, but um, we, uh, let's see, last article, institutions pour capital into Bitcoin at its highest rate since July of last year. And uh, July seems to be a pivotal month. Remember July, 2021, July, 2022. Let's see, digital asset managers, coin share, say large institution placers. Uh, I already said that. Okay. Okay. After a dry spell. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read all of it. So, you know, nice, uh, nice little vi vi visual there. So I'm going to screenshot that and not entirely sure why, but I'm going to use that somewhere. Okay. Is there anything else you guys want to look at? <clears throat> all right. Don't all talk at once, but that's fine. We'll keep going. All right. Well, I think we've, we've, we've checked it all out. So why don't we do this? And I'm going to hop over and um, let's take a look at the market movers. I want to kind of keep similar to the format that um, we were sort of doing on these Tuesday classes. You know, I, I'll save our basket and everything. That's tomorrow's class. And uh, by the way, if you are here and you're a crypto mastery member and not actively or currently enrolled in active trader uh let me know if you'd like to find out more about those classes it's just moonstream.io slash m3 we've opened just a couple more spaces because the uh questions and support questions have come down and uh but we just don't want to we don't do too many at a time here all right so in terms of filters I want to I don't love this UI. What is it here? Export screener, time interval, the top gainers, but I want to get rid of some of these uh, uh, things in here that I don't want to see necessarily. I've got price change, high, low. All right, it's fine. But I just want to do the exchanges that I want here, and I've got to go over to the right. That's what it is. They should let us squeeze these back and forth. I don't need to see the high and low. That's kind of a clumsy here. This is it. Okay, so the high. Don't need the high and low. I want to see what exchange it's on, the change, change percentage, and, and that's mostly it. So now we can see it all in one go. I'm going to change the exchanges. So instead of all of them, I only want to have... Usually I'll just do Coinbase for simplicity and maybe <clears throat> Gemini. Uh, we could do KuCoin, kind of widen it up a bit. All right, so now we want to see the uh, percent change. All right, uh, this one, not sure what this is. is. I'm not, it's a 3X. Okay, so, you know, we're seeing some pumps on these things. I, you know, if you're watching these, if you guys have any that you want to put on the radar here, we can, but I'm, I'm not familiar with this project. And it just, it, you know, when they're on KuCoin, usually they're margined and they just, this thing's going to come back to earth. Please don't go buy this. These things will come back down. They're up, up above their Bollinger Bands. This will pull back below 10 cents, probably by the end of the day, by tomorrow, in my opinion, my humble opinion. All right, what else do we have? We have a 24 hour change. Okay. Oh, I just need a minute. One more time. Okay. Hang on. I got a lot of windows open here. Um, what is this? 4,000%. We're not going to look at that. Just ignore these. I'm going to look at projects I've at least heard of. How about that? But that, I mean, look, this is interesting. These Oasis Tether, that's an interesting chart to me. This is the reason to do this, guys. And this, this is how you're going to find these movers. I wouldn't touch it here. 
it had a big pump. The day traders got a hold of this and pumped that thing. But if it comes back down to 0 0.07, you know, that might be time to throw a little bit at it. It's trading at 0 0.07 cents. There are, uh, there are gains to be made on these. And uh, I feel safer with them coming off these market bottoms. But see, that's a nice uptrend. Why don't we do this? Hmm. What uh, I'm, I'm not going to put it on the active trader list. I got too many lists here. I got to, uh, what do we have? I thought I had a crypto mastery list. Yeah, right here, crypto. Well, no, that's my, my own list. So let's do, what do we want to do? A crypto mastery list or kind of a micro caps list? Hmm, maybe both. All right, let's do that. I'm going to do a new list and wait a minute so i need to be over here and over there and I'll, I'll look up those two you guys wanted to see here in a moment coming up on the hour too don't have a lot of time left but um let's see and if you want any help on the indicators how to use them uh, i'll dive into that a little bit new lay uh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to do this, create a new list, we'll call this crypto mastery. That's going to be confusing though, because I have a crypto master list. I might just rename that. Uh, and then inside of this, we can create a micro caps list. So I'll do that. Add this crypto mastery up at the top there, and then add a section. Rename that section micro caps, uh, you know, for lack of a better term. Yeah, there you go. So these will be these these pump pump and dumpers. And, you know, sometimes I'll put a green mark based on the exchange. But see, this is all red on the radar. I would definitely not buy this right now. But on a pullback, potentially. And then you pull up your indicators. So, you know, the indicators aren't as good on these that have run like hell like that. Uh, so, but be careful with these pumps here and uh, use your charts, charting skills. This is interesting. Coin 98. I mean, not a buy recommendation at all, but, you know, here's, we're seeing a lot of this happening, breaking out of trend line resistance. Okay. Bullish engulfing candle. This one, it's on Coinbase. Looks interesting to me. A little bit overbought on the TSI, but uh, let's add it. Crypto mastery. I'm going to have to name rename my crypto master list, as I said, but at any rate. And then that's on Coinbase, so that's blue. So you guys can do this, uh, and, and if you want to, if you have the time to go through these, certainly you can find some great opportunities. What... Um, Oh, what am I doing? I'm looking at volume. What you guys didn't correct me on that. My uh, coffee hasn't kicked in. Uh, I'm actually on a kind of a detox fast. No coffee today. So the change above. So basically, I, uh, I but isn't that interesting? I sorted by volume, and uh, it's not something I've done before on that. So that's something maybe a good clue for some of these things. Sort by volume might see, you know, looky there. It's like we have our metal detector out. We found some gold. Bam, Bam Bridge, bullish engulfing on the 21 day. I'm going to put an alert up here at $6 and just see if it hits and say, hey, guys, maybe you know we should be following this unusual volume. So I'm going to put it on the list. So what else? Maybe just do the top five. We've got win BTC. Let's see. No, wait a minute. Uh, bond ray we did those okay uh win btc no good oas we already looked at okay we have wbtc and uh, not so much okay but there's another one i don't know i really like this why do i why do you guys like this pattern do you I'll tell you why i like it 21 above the 50 um bullish engulfing candle <clears throat> seems like it's in a new uptrend uh, oh, we already put that on there. Okay. 
Maker DAO, and then uh, let's get okay. Maker DAO, not too much. We've got Origin Token, uh, higher volume. OGN BTC, interesting. You know we like OGN. And um, so let's do this then. I'm going to jump over and do the uh, percentage change on the the gainers. So we've got uh, something called Bit Gert. Pump. It's a pump and dumper. I don't know. Uh, you could put it on the watch. Bit Gert. No idea. Sounds like Bit Get, but um, I don't know. It doesn't feel that strong to me. T E M. Not enough history, but let's see. Twenty-eight cents. T E M Dow. Ten Dow could see a pump. I mean, look, these are the ones in route market rallies, future market rallies. Uh, let's just put it on the list here for our crypto mastery in that uh, kind of pump range. Put an alert at 0.6 cents just to see, you know, th these I wouldn't put a lot out on these. But a little bit would be OK. OK, crypto bubbles, KS says I'll pull that up here in a moment. Let's do uh, just a scam. We've got H.I.G.H. Uh, that's already run. B-U-X, you know, interesting. I, I won't lie. I mean, a lot of volume adding to these. I'm not going to trade them, but I, I like to watch these to kind of get an overall feel for what's going on in these uh, altcoins. Uh, let's see, 26% there, bullish engulfing. So just to skim through, see if any of these that are ones we watch. Uh, Mask Network is one I'm familiar with. Okay, all green on the radar. Mask looks interesting. We've got, um, I'd like to see a pullback on it, but I'm going to put that on the list. I already have that on my regular crypto master list, so we'll, we'll keep an eye on Mask. We've got DER, not so much, mostly red on the radar. But, you know, once you know what to look for, you just kind of pick your battles. This looks good. That's the same thing. That's mask USD, same as USDT. Uh, the same Moni, not familiar with Moni. Uh, pretty thin, I don't know. Uh, you know, but this is something you guys might want to play around with. Here we've got the FTM USD3 long, like we said, up uh, nicely today, 18%. KOL, not familiar. All right, so let's do this. Uh, that, so that hopefully is helpful. We got some possible gems. Crypto bubbles, KS says. I, I've probably, I think I've seen this. I've heard of it for sure. And uh, <laughs> that's fun. <clears throat> All right. I mean, visually, uh, yeah, it's cool. I'm not so FTM we've got. Now, this is this is the 3X, so it's a little bit misleading. Aptos, I keep hearing more at Aptos. Let's, let's take a look at Aptos. Uh, let me get to my daily chart here. I, I was seeing somebody um, shill this and kind of try to pump it. So, yeah, I mean, this thing's pretty thinly traded. I, I wouldn't touch this here. It's had its run. I don't, yeah. Okay, um, what else we wanted to look at? Let's see. Uh, I'll, I'll read you the, the description, KS. I didn't do that yet. Uh, you wanted to look at, well, let's see, CHC. Okay, perpetual contracts here. We'll just do it on Binance. Um, so Pirate J wanted to look at uh, CHC Chili's. I know this is a moonstream pick. Let's, um, I don't, it's not looking great here. I think I would, I'd be inclined to, hmm. I would have, I wouldn't sell it. Sometimes these fake out, but it's getting rejected. It's it's not getting above the 21 and 50. So I think it looks like it's going to roll down. I'd set a tight stop loss on this right down below there at 12.83. But at, you might, I would actually maybe sell half the position. It doesn't feel very strong here. It's heading down on the TSI. Signal's gone red. I think if you're in profits on this, I'd take at least half. In general, not financial advice, but this to me looks like it's going to roll down and head lower. As we know, when the Bollinger Bands tighten, uh, it'll it's pre uh, precipitating a move, and if it's below the twenty one and fifty, and it's in sort of a downtrend, that's usually the direction of the move. So I think CHC does head lower from here. Uh, in the longer term, you might you could always buy it back uh, lower down here based on ERI TSI. 
All right, so T threshold, I guess this would be it. Uh, I'll do the KuCoin just so we can get a feel for, you know, um, big pumps on this bullish engulfing, you know, kind of had its run. Zoom out here, could it go higher? Sure, but uh, yeah, I'd say the golden pocket on that would be up around 75.075 where I would take profits on this. It's just an unknown quantity. It probably spikes up here and then comes back down and who knows. All right, so crypto bubbles, go back to that. We've got uh, bubble size set to performance. Yeah, so it's kind of like the um, the one that Susie used to have on and uh, with the boxes and the big squares. Yeah, this is a little creepy actually. Uh, I'll get used to it. Um, yeah, no, it's cool though. I mean, you see some polygons up 12%, Eagle, some of our favorites, uh, Mana and LRC, KuCoin, their, their token. This is, I would watch the KuCoin token also because companies that make money get investors and they'd had a really nice run. Plus, it was on KuCoin, so it got pumped well last run. Uh, so, you know, this is a good representation here. And uh, yeah, and it doesn't try to squeeze all of them in. So that's cool. ABAX up 11%, beautiful. What happens when you click them? All right, so this is the, the week. How about the daily? It doesn't look like it's up. Well, it will push up higher and it sold off for the week, kind of turning over. I like ABAX though. Let's see, uh, bubble content set to performance shows where the money is moving by volume, can do daily, yeah. I like it, thanks for sharing. Then do for further research, help to identify other projects. <clears throat> and keep on the radar. So on and okay. So Max Wright saw it get showed it. Cool. Yeah, Max is uh Max is a good guy. I had I don't know. That's the biggest reason to go down to the Bitcoin 2022. I mean, it's not the biggest reason, but um I took Max out for stakes at uh STK and uh that was good. And then I actually went back there the next night for uh, stakes with some guys that used to work with us. And that's when I ran into BitBoy. They were at the table behind us. Nice guy. He's doing a lot for the community. Some people were out on BitBoy. He's really, he's doing a lot for adoption. He's, <clears throat> you know, sure. You know, the, the name, he probably might've really done that if he knew it was going to take off, but um, really nice in person. All right. Um, so that's about it, guys. Anything else you want to look at? Uh, we could... You know, it's not a whole lot happening here. We'll look at the sort of intraday and tomorrow. Certainly, we're going to look at that and um, why I think that likely we pull back here. But uh, I don't know. I, we haven't seen an ERI on the weekly. TSI is overbought. Not to say it can't stay there. Um, all right. Well, I, I think, you know, the, this class is also designed to really use the indicators. And so... We haven't done a lot of that here. I'll just jump to a one hour, four hour on Bitcoin. And what is it telling the four hour? And I was watching this this morning. Uh, the uh, four hour here, TSI turning up, you have an ERI. So we should head higher if you're judging on this four hour chart. Uh, for how long and how high, I don't know. If we break above 23,900, call it 24,000, then obviously we're heading up to, well, I think we'll head to 25.5. Uh, let's see. Now I have a magnet here. Why? Because I believe there was, uh, why did we have a magnet there? Oh, because of the CME gap uh, that uh, already filled. We see, let's overlay that again. Well, we had it uh, more like this. Or was it this one? You know, so basically the magnet was it would pull back to fill that CME gap down, down to around 22,000, but we kind of did that already, you know, so it wasn't that one we were concerned about. I thought there was another one down at these levels around 20,000 CME gap, 21,000. Call it 21, 200, 
21,200. But that's even not very much. I mean, 21,200. Yeah, so hard to say. Anything, anything else, you guys? All right, well, that's about it. We ran a little long today. Thanks for your comments and questions. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow in the Active Trader class, and we'll try to unpack this a little more. It's, it's going to be quiet ahead of the FOMC. Um, I mean, we could do the class late again for the FOMC. What do you guys think? I mean, it seems to be kind of a nothing burger when we do it, and then we, we sit there kind of looking at staring at watching paint dry. Uh, so uh, well, let's do the normal time and at one, and I'll just kind of let you know what, what the possibilities are and give you some ideas for if it goes higher, then do this, if it goes lower, then consider this. Uh, prior J, let's see, what's a good price to get some ETH? Yeah, I mean, if you can get ETH, I mean, it's, you know, can't give individual advice, et cetera, but um, what do we have here? I mean, we've got sort of this symmetrical wedge forming. I mean, could could push higher though. I mean, if we were to draw it like that. But yeah, if I mean, if you could get ETH, I have my levels at 1290, 1300 would be great. Um if you have ETH, I'd hold, but I'd sell up into this if it pushes higher to the 1890 range because, you know, we could see this kind of thing more than likely. Um, let's see. I mean, let's uh, load some of our, our other uh, indicators, shall we? Again, I, I want to fully utilize all of these indicators on these classes. So, so the um, let's see, what am I looking for? I'm looking for the volatility index and the average true range. There, dynamic ATR. Uh, the vol index doesn't usually do a whole lot on the weekly, but let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah, I mean, it is pushing higher out of that lower range on ETH. So I would say could have some more steam. Doesn't doesn't mean it will. <clears throat> what we'd like to see is this average true range turn to a green on the weekly. And uh, that that would take a breakout, kind of like what I've shown. So the, the moral of the story here is don't fall mo into any of this. <coughs> Excuse me. And... So, all right, well, that's all I'm going to leave you with today, guys. Um, yeah, Cornelia, I think, well, we've we've done the later class. Uh, I actually, I don't know that I can uh, go later tomorrow. I've got a schedule conflict. So we'll just we'll just keep it at one and I'll stay on a little longer. Uh, the announcement's usually at two. So, so we'll, you know, we usually stay on long enough anyway. So we'll just make it a normal class and the announcement's at two. And uh, by, by 2, 2.30, we're seeing the movement on that so um you know the direction here will kind of, will depend a lot on that and the, most likely in the that's been priced in and we've haven't seen any really big surprises so a quarter point priced in if we get more than a quarter point obviously it'll drop if we get zero we'll get a pump and then that'll give us some more direction so uh let's see quick look at haven coin let's see I would uh, just like to look at that for my own personal interest. And what else is happening here? Just a quick look at around. What's happening? Haven is a uh, helium coin. Did it get delisted? Is it really at zero? Something seems wrong about that. Uh, may have been of a, uh, where am I? XHV, I'll take a look at that. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, we'll look at that tomorrow. Not much going on there. All right, guys. Yeah, KS, good good advice. Uh, remember, set your trading view alerts for any decent pullbacks. You know, have a plan. Plan your day, work your plan. Plan your week, work your plan. And uh, 
So that's all I got for you guys. It's kind of quiet today. We'll see what happens on the FOMC tomorrow and we'll unpack that and uh, uh, I'll uh, study this. It's uh, definitely a little bit, little bit um, uh, hypno, hypnotizing. There you go. Hypnotizing. <laughs> you can stare at this all day. Um, anyway, cool. Good, good resource. Is that from Binance? It looks like a Binance product. Yep. Binance. All right. Trying to outdo everyone else. All right, guys. Take care. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow in class. Okay. I'll see you soon. I'll update you if anything happens. Bye.